it's Tuesday morning here <clears throat> um, and of course it is time for Tuesday chat and um, today I thought I would do a drawing demo for you uh, it's absolutely gorgeous um, day here today I don't know where you are what part of the world you're in but here in um, Queensland Australia we have got stunning weather um, but the westerly winds have picked up, so it's pretty windy out there. I meant to shut my door, but I, I forgot. So if we get heaps of wind blowing through here, then um, I might have to jump up and do that. Um, so yeah, so um, hi guys, I can see a couple of you watching already. Um, so today uh, in, in um, the Creative Barn membership, Hi, Helene and Mary Ann and Odette. <laughs> In the membership today, it's the first Tuesday of the month, so a new tutorial comes out every every month. Um, and the one for this month is this gorgeous little dog here, running through water, because we're looking at animals in action this month. Um, but I thought what would be fun would be um, if I do a demo of the tennis ball he's carrying. <laughs> so, um, and just show how to get, like everyone in the membership, of course, gets that tutorial. So they see how I do it, but I thought it'd be fun on here to just share um, how I create that texture of the tennis ball, that furry texture. Um, so yeah, that's what I thought I would do today. Rather than do a chat, I'm, um, Bit worn out from working on my studio if you've been following along on my little um videos uh two days ago i rearranged the whole thing and yesterday i painted the wall and then today i'm hoping to put up that gallery system so i'll definitely share that later on um the other thing if you are interested in in any of my tutorials that the essential tier to the creative barn is always open okay i've put a link in the comments so if you want to check that out um, you can so um it's the premium tier of the membership that is actually closed and only open probably two three times a year but that essentials tier which gives you access to all the tutorials like this guy um you just don't have any of the live sessions with me. That's the only difference between the two. So, um, all right, so this is the tennis ball. I've put a, uh, in the discussion of the event, today's Tuesday chat event, um, I've put a copy of that tennis ball if you wanted to have a go yourself at um, a later date. Or you can have a go right now with me. So <laughs> I'm gonna spin this camera. it down and hopefully it stays still I've normally I um oh, let's just tighten everything up normally I will film in landscape mode but oh, this silly thing loosens up all the time but I decided it would be better to film in portrait mode because then I can share this on um on like instagram and that will make a reel so i'm trialing it in this mode so we'll have to bear with me hi donna my little clamp thing's not the greatest it keeps loosening for some reason but anyway so now you should be able to see my drawing paper so what i'm using i'm using pastels for this tennis ball demo Okay, um, and I'm using sand colored pastel mat. All right, now the reason I've chosen sand is because I felt I could see a bit of sand color through here. Now, um, usually I like to pick a paper that sort of helps. If I can see a color sort of throughout, I'll try and pick that paper, but you can do opposites, you could, if you were doing a cool image, you could pick a warm paper to sort of contrast it and have bits of that um, warmer coming through the cool. Um, I could have gone, if, if I wanted this really bright, 
I probably would have gone a light grey paper to make the pastel stand out a bit brighter. But, um, but I'm going with this one. So, first of all, I'm just going to draw a circle. Bear with me. If um, It might be a wonky tennis ball. But, okay, let's hope that's not too bad. We can work on the background later. Um, but I just want to, I'll, I'll do a bit of a shadow there for the background. I probably won't bother too much with up the top. Okay, so essentially uh, we need to get this, um, this little line in as well. So we'll get that, I might use a cream just to sort of get that in. It sort of starts off about there. And comes around and then it sort of disappears up here a bit okay so that is essentially our tennis ball okay so what I'm gonna do this is it's a really green tennis ball actually um, the one the little dog was carrying was um, more yellow than this one but I'm going to use, I, I use Carbothello pastel pencils pretty much all the time. Just they're my favourite. So what I might do is, because I want up this end quite light, we might just use a 695, it's a light yellow, and just start to block in. You could probably do this in sticks, but... Um, in that dog portrait, it was quite small, so I decided to go with with pencils. Now, to sort of help create the texture, I'll try and keep my hand out of the way. I'm just doing like little circular motions. Okay, so I just want a bit of that lighter yellow up there. That's sort of the direction the the light's kind of hitting it. And then I'm going to come in with this. This is an amazing green in the Carbothello set. It's number 560. It's such a beautiful bright green. So again, I'm just going to build up using the same stroke. So it depends what I'm working on. If I'm, I'm always looking at the direction of... Um, of the the marks on a subject so fur of course we're always going in the direction of fur and um and also i'm looking at the um length i suppose of fur as well the same with this applies so this here is quite sort of short circular motions because it's kind of really short fuzzy type of um, hair on the tennis ball or whatever it is I don't even know what a tennis ball is made of <laughs> so I'm just kind of giving it a light coat and you can see I'm only using this pencil lightly that is the trick with pastel um, pencil pastel pencils on pastel mat okay which is pretty much what I use all the time. And it is just building up light layers. Okay, but by doing that sort of um, little circular straight marks, you can sort of already see it's got a bit of that fuzzy look to it. Okay, I might just get this center line sort of done as well. So I'm going to use a 610. I've got 310 written on here, but it's actually not 610. So it kind of disappears down there. So this is just a brown. It's a bit browner along the edges. Because it's got a bit of a shadow. And that shadow kind of stops about there. And we want this a bit 
lumpy and bumpy. And then I'm going to use 615. I feel like it's got a bit of this yellow. It's quite a, it's quite a dirty um, line through there. If it's, it looks like a fairly new tennis ball, but the actual line isn't the greatest, is it? Looks like it's, um, yeah, pretty dirty. Okay, the one I, I did on the dog was a lot lighter. So I'm gonna put a bit of cream back in. No, not that cream. Let's go with, um, I might mix here. I feel like it's, Actually, it's all right. I'm looking at two different pictures here. I should stick to the printout I'm look working on is really dull, but I have got the tennis ball on my iPad, so it's a lot brighter up here on that. So it's a good idea if you've got a really good printer. Like I usually print my. Um, reference images out on my printer uh, in like using photo paper and print it out in really high resolution. I might even bring some gray in here, but today I just printed it quickly and it um, didn't print it very well. Let's get a bit more dark in some of these places. I might even bring my um, pit pastel in as well. I've got a, um, I use the uh, Faber Castell pit pastel dark sepia quite a bit. I might even get, just gonna touch this pink in it, I think in the picture as well. So I might use a bit of the flesh tint you can see how I just go back and forth building up layers until it's sort of how I want it. This is my pit pastel. It's dark sepia 175. And it's a really dark brown. So I do use different brands of pencils depending on the color I'm after. Not all brands have the same colors. So depending on what you want, like in the Carbothello's has this beautiful Kaput Mortem color that none of the others seem to have. Bring that brown back in that I started with, the 610. It's quite dark on this side. for now. Now let's get back to this um, actual tennis ball. So I probably should have sharpened my pencils to start with. <laughs> All right, I might get a bit of, um, let's see, got all these colours here. It's a really green tennis ball, so let's get some greens happening. So this is 575. Again, I'm going to constantly be using these same strokes and just light layers, little circular motions. And it's similar to um, if, you, if you're doing any type of sphere, egg, like just a, any type of ball, round shape, and you're looking at where the light's hitting it. Okay, which in this case, we're coming from this direction. So it's going to be lighter on this side. And it gets quite a bit darker on this side. I'm 
just fairly light along there. Let's get a bit more over this side here. I think I'd like to bring a bit more yellow into him though. Into him. It's not a him, is it? It's just a ball. <laughs> All right, so this is um, 210 yellow. There is a brighter yellow in the Carbothello, which I don't have. I've lost it somehow. I think I'm about due for a full set of new Carbothellos, actually. But in saying that, there's some Carbothellos I've had mine for quite a number of years, and I've replaced, you know, quite a few over the time, but there's some I haven't even used. So probably buying another whole set isn't probably the smartest idea. Okay, let's go even darker. I might even bring grey in actually. I feel like there's some um, brown in there too, but let's go darker with our grey. So this grey is 726. It's a, a coolish grey, but um, a warm grey would be fine as well. I'm just trying to get this a lot darker down here. I'm going to bring some brown in as well, I think. The only problem with um, the Carbothellos as well, I find they don't have a lot of really good dark greens. So quite often I have to make them up using a few different colors. So let's bring our brown back in as well. That we were using in the middle, the 610. And this is really quite dark down here. But you can see we can still see the texture because I'm just using light layers and that's what we need to make sure we, we don't want a tennis ball looking smooth. These are quite dark down here. And I wanted to add a bit of I feel like there's a bit of a yellowy orange to it as well. So I'm just going to throw a bit of this with the one I was using on that center. That's this center line, which is 615. Okay, now I can bring in, come back with some green. Green is this one. I don't know if I really want this green in it, but I'm going to put a little bit in. It's 590. <laughs> I feel like it's more greys down here than green, but we'll keep the green theme going. Okay, and we'll come back to our first green we were putting in here, which is the 575. Now, you probably could do this a lot quicker if you were just using sticks. But this is, yeah, it's fun just building up layers. It gives you some good practice with the pastel mat and how it reacts with different pencils. And you can see I can just keep going. I might go a bit of... I might even get a bit of this colour, just so along this edge is a bit darker as well. I 
ones look gray. in this lighter area. I need to get this a lot darker yet down the bottom. All right, but I want to come back in with my 560. Pastel matte is, I just love it because it holds so many layers and you can just, if you keep those layers light, you can just keep building and building and building. And you can see where we want that texture of the paper to be working with us on this one as well. I'm only going to get light there. I want to add some white up this end. Okay, now along here is fairly bright, just along that edge. And it's pretty bright along here. Mum's down there a little bit. I'm going to slowly put a little bit of this into this area. That needs to be darker just there too. Just so it sort of ties that colour all throughout. Even though I need to go a lot darker down here yet. some white happening up here so of course the white will blend in with the colors I've got below it if you wanted just a really bright white you're best to put that down first so you've just got to remember all the time when you're working in pastel that it's going to blend with the color below it Okay, so just always keep that in mind. Put that over this side. And I can come back in here. If I don't want it as white, if I want a bit of green to it or yellow, and come back in with that on top. Okay, let's get some maybe more dark. Um, I feel like it's a bit more grey. actually going to come in with my, I want it really dark, so I'm going to go with that, my Pit 175, my Faber-Castell. So again, I'm just using it lightly. Keep it more towards the bottom here. I find a dark brown. Some I, I 
I still use black in my work sometimes, but black um, can be really flat. So let's get a bit more of this green maybe. Blend it in that there. I need more grey as well. Who'd have thought there was this many colours in a tennis ball? <laughs> it's probably just me. I guess this is what I do. I, I go back and forth and back and forth until I figure out what colour it is I'm sort of seeing. Which is the beauty of pastel. You're blending on the paper rather than um, blending on a canvas. Like on the palette, say if you were doing oil paints, you'd be blending on your palette until you got your colours, which that used to frustrate me when I used to do some oil painting. Whereas I prefer blending like this so I can see it coming together. Um, I've got that fairly bright there. Let's push this grey. Up there a little bit more. And this side here needs to be a bit darker, I think. Let's bring our green back over it. shadow along here. Might use this dark green in a couple of places through here. And probably a bit grey with it as well. This is a wonky shaped ball, isn't it? <laughs> I probably should have um, um, <laughs> done a much nicer shaped tennis ball. Anyway, it's obviously um, an old ball that's been hit around the court a few times. <laughs> Let's bring it around her a bit. I can also, um, if I found I wanted this a bit more yellow, um, I'll just let me finish this a bit more, just get a bit more green in through here. Um, if I wanted more yellow, I could get my yellow and you can glaze so you just really lightly run yellow over it all just hold your pencil right at the end end of it and just the weight of the pencil is all it needs and you can just run that over it if you felt it needed more i wish i had a darker green I should. I, I find um, Derwent's actually have some really great dark greens. I'm just going to build some dark up here a bit more yet. It still needs to go a lot darker. And then I'll just throw in a bit of a background as well. Once the background's in, we can then add um, some little furry strokes out coming into the background.
I'll just put a bit more pressure as I'm sort of getting to where I want to finish you can adjust the pressure so I've been using the same pressure the whole way just building up layers but um, now I want this a bit darker I can put a bit more pressure down Now I've got a couple of sticks here that I thought I would do a bit of a background in so we can bring that up. Now normally I would, oh, I do have one, I was going to say normally I would have a sponge tool here because you can see when you're on pastel mat the sticks don't blend that great um, which is why I like to use a sponge tool oh, they don't blend that great with your finger is what I meant to say we can bring that right up So a sponge tool just blends a lot easier. And I want to try and push that right up against the ball. well is I would bring that up and make it go lighter as it went up <laughs> this is the wonkiest tennis ball I think I've ever seen <laughs> oh my god all right and then we want a darker one for a shadow so I've just got a dark brown here so we could even have got something even darker than that Just let me find some lighter. There's a lighter pink up here, so we might just blend this up. There's that red. Quite often I'll do the background first, but I decided I might get a bit messy if I did the background first on this one. Quite often we'll give it a push in with my fingers as well. And I think I want a darker shadow.
Sorry, I've got my um, sticks behind me. No. I'm trying to find a soft one. That's better. I've got all different pastel sticks. And same as with the pencils, your pastels, you have um, different softness and hardness. So I was after a soft one that would, the softer the pastel, the better it sort of stands out. So, so I was trying to find something soft, but I kept grabbing a brand that's hard. <laughs> okay, just trying to get a bit of red off. Take it off. There we go. Okay, so now we can come back and finish working on our tennis ball. Now the darkest point of a ball is that shadow right there. So right here is the darkest point just under it. Okay, so I'm just trying to darken this ball up a little bit as it reaches that point. A bit light there, just get a bit of grey in. And you could have a bit of reflected light coming up onto it here, which would be the colour of the table, which I don't have with me, but you could have a bit of red sort of coming up onto it there. Let's get some greens again. Okay, and then I would have, this is where once you've done the background, you can then bring out little fuzzy bits into it. It's not a lot with a tennis ball, I suppose, but that's why usually if I'm doing an animal, I would do the background first because you're bringing the fur out into it. Whereas the tennis ball, there's a couple little stray ones here and there but so I just want to make this edge a bit fuzz fuzzy so I'm just doing like little marks and every now and again you could have one sort of sitting up so I'm just using that beautiful bright green for this effect This is the 560 again. So I don't really want red up in there. Let's just try and get rid of that a bit. You just gotta sometimes when you bring your pencil, it's really frustrating when you're doing fur. When you bring your pencil into the background, if it's a dark like red or black, you get it on your pencil and then it drags into your light area. So you quite often got to give your pencil a bit of a wipe. Don't really know any other way to stop that. Um, I 
think I need a bit of a sharper dark edge just along here in that shadow. So I'm going to bring in my dark brown again, that dark sepia. And then definitely this side here. It's quite dark. So we might bring our 610 brown back in and just darken this side just in places like not solid you can see I've constantly it's a bit like I've got the shakes <laughs> I feel like that's how I work sometimes So we just want this side darker as it comes through here. It's a bit lighter. And those, again, it's not a, a sharp edge. It's just a few little marks of dark. I feel like that needs to be... I think I've got that a bit too much. Let's bring some green over the top of it. And we might have to bring a bit more white into here. Now if you wanted an area really bright white, I would then go back to my sticks. But the, in this tennis ball, there's nothing really that bright. All right, we can soften the shadow as it comes out a bit. That's a big shadow I've got happening there. <laughs> like I said, you want it um, the darkest part of the shadow. This is actually black, it is, is right as the object hits the table. And then it sort of fades out as it comes out. Anyway. scratching my paper. This was just a bit of scrap. Alright, now I will come back. I, I will um, check the comments because I've been focused on that. I haven't been able to check any comments. Um, just let me have a look on my iPad. Uh, hold on guys, I just want to make sure if there's any comments, like if there's any questions, okay. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Could you put the photo of the ball? Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> sorry Wendy, I should have, um, it's a bit hard to put the photo when I'm working. I've got the photo really big and it's actually on my iPad. Um, I should have read that before, shouldn't I? I don't know, Carrie. Okay, so see how big I've got the ball? What if I go up? Not this way, maybe. I've got the printed the ball out really big. <laughs> But yeah, you can see it's, I think I'm a bit yellow compared to, to what 
to what the ball is. But anyway, that's um, that's a demo. I'll spin back to me now. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> so that was a, just a demo showing um, how to create that fuzzy, furry texture. Um, like this one on the little dog was way quicker because he's, uh, I think it only took about nine minutes of that in the lesson because it's, um, it's a lot smaller, of course. But by doing those little teeny round sort of strokes, will help to create the texture you're after. So like I was saying, anything I'm, um, I'm doing, I'm always working out which way, like so like with fur, of course, usually with an eye, I bring all my strokes towards the pupil because I feel like, especially cat's eyes, you can really notice that. Um, fence post, um, I go with the grain so all my strokes are constantly going with the direction that I can see um, the marks are in, okay, to create that texture. So, all right, um, well, that was it for today's Tuesday chat. So instead of a chat, it was a little demo. And like I said, if you are interested in learning with me, my um, essentials tier of the Creative Bar membership is always open. It's only 19 US a month, which I think is around $26, $27 a month. Um, think of it like Netflix. So you pay for access to all the tutorials. There's well over 100 tutorials in there, for all the way from fundamental beginners right through to more detailed stuff like this. Uh, to bigger work, to um, everything. Um, if you pay for the essentials tier for a year, um, it's even cheaper again. I think it's 170 US for the whole year. So it ends up working out a lot cheaper per month. You get um, quite a big discount if you join for the year. Um, the premium tier, which of the Creative Barn, that's where you have all the live sessions with me. Um, that one's only open a few times a year, okay, which is closed at the moment. It will be opening before the end of the year, but if you're keen to get started and want to just have access to the tutorials, then um, definitely the link's in the comments. If you're interested, you can go and check it out. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you've learned something with this demo. Like I said, in the event here um, is the reference image, okay? I've got that image there. It's from Pixabay, so it's copyright free, so it's fine to, to do your drawing and share it um, if you want to have a go. So you can re-watch this video. I'll keep this video, um, the recording, in the my public Facebook group. It'll be on Kezart here. It'll be in the public group, um, the Drawing Wildlife and Nature Beginners to Advance. So you can go back, have a look at your reference, and um, have a go yourself if you want. Okay, all right. Um, oh, I doubt you can't wait to draw the little dog. He's so cute. Little Jack Russell. Sorry, I'm just trying to read comments as well. All right, I'm going to let you go. And um, I hope that was fun. I, I want to do a demo every month or so. So hopefully um, uh, you learned something and you enjoyed it. So I will talk to you all next Tuesday. And um, thanks for joining me. Bye.